Hello, and welcome to today's screening of the University of Laverne's Oral History Presentations. My name is Danielle Ridewood, a student in Honors 304-351, Laverne in Higher Education. Today's episode is entitled, From on the Edge to at the Top, a look at the development of the University of Laverne's Honors Program. The Honors Program was initiated by Dr. Andrea Leibinger, Associate Professor of Spanish, in 1988. Leibinger also chaired the task force which developed the program and then became its director. The goal of the program is to attract and retain students and faculty of outstanding quality and, through this, to improve the academic quality of the College of Arts and Sciences. The initial idea for the honors program at the University of Laverne emerged from an unexpected place. I was on a committee. I had to do with admissions, the admissions, undergraduate admissions program. And um, I was a faculty representative on that committee. And our job as part of that committee was to evaluate applications from students who were not admissible, uh, um, who are marginally admissible, who right. had uh, either their uh, their GPAs from high school or their test scores, SATs, were just a little bit below the threshold. And Pat said, what this school really needs is an honors program because, she said, we, we spend so much time and energy, and we should, justifiably, helping to make sure that students who needed extra academic support had a fulfilling and enriching experience. But on the other end of the academic spectrum, that is for the more academically successful, gifted, etc., um, we didn't have anything in place either to entice them or to retain them. Uh, Andrea was never one to, you know, kind of march into the fray all by herself. I mean, she, she wasn't stupid. But, but I, I, I think it was great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we did was to um, do some research. This was in the pre-internet era. <laughs> yeah. you know, we're talking about, uh, well, the first class came in in 1988, so this would have been in the years between when I came in 1988. The first thing I think we did was to become a member of NCHC so that I could go to the conferences and, and um, learn what other schools were doing and what other schools had done to get a, a program. And we studied models of, of honors programs that were similar, well the schools were similar to ours in, in terms of enrollment, um, maybe um, liberal arts oriented, whatever it was that right. made them. You know, it was, a, it was, I think it was probably a really, a nightmare to try to keep organized and get, just, just the paperwork on that puppy must have been really tough. Yeah. The University of Laverne Honors Program has developed a unique curriculum that exposes students to diverse ways of thinking through interdisciplinary learning. So, and I think that was an idea was that the honors courses should be rotated, that they were going to be offered three times, and then there would be other courses. So there was a kind of built-in flexibility into the way the honors program worked then. So there was always uh, change, I think, implicit in the program. Uh, gender, ethnicity, and blah, blah, in mm. film. Mm -hmm. And what eventually happened was those, when we, would, we, flo we flew them first with honors students, and then they seemed to go into the general um, In the core program, yeah, the core. Core. yeah. 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 Um, we got to, to sort of sample um, different areas, so together the intersection of these mm -hmm. different disciplines. Um, and have that count for GEs, yeah. you know, which was a real exciting <laughs> yeah, thing, a real carrot, yeah. you know. So we, um, this was not the added classes on top of what we needed to do. But, I mean, it was real interesting, covered a lot of interesting topics. Um, there was um, a psychology and marketing um, course, class about, how is it, about the creative process, mm. which was real interesting. It was a, sort of a mixture of history and philosophy mm. with creativity. And and I think, you know, those team teaching experiences with Sean in the early days, you know, kind of formed my sense of what a really great 
class is. Mm. Yeah, he's just, he's absolutely wonderful to work with. I actually took a class that the two of them taught together. And they, they actually bounced off of each other pretty well in a classroom setting. Um, this course that they team taught was called The Language of Art, oh. which talked about trying to capture visual sources like painting or sculpture through words, mm. and how no two people really see the same thing, and how you know writing about art is not necessarily the same thing as, as seeing it. Um, so that exposed me to a lot of poetry, a lot of writing, a lot of art. Um, and of course, in, in some ways, it's, it's a very um, intensive uh, experience, because, you know, there are two faculty members per class, which in some ways is, is, is very indulgent. Yes. But in others, it, it results in such a, such a rich um, experience for, for, the, for the students, first and foremost, of course, I think. But also for the faculty, um, you know, I, I realized the, the rich generative capacity of, of interdisciplinary thinking in, in producing new approaches to, mm. uh, um, uh, to a discipline. And I, you know, I'm, I'm hugely in favor of those uh, interdisciplinary collaborations to this day. I, I wish I could do more of it myself. I miss it. be more of a fixed curriculum so that the same courses would be offered. Mm -hmm. um, and so we did that year make a change and that's where we uh, came up with the global ideas uh, sequence which has been in effect uh, I think until you know since then pretty much. Right, right. Uh, so there was kind of a chronological sequence so the first courses, the first course was going to be um, something having to do with religion and philosophy going back of course to you know, ancient times, and then up to Shakespeare, and then there was, um, I think that came from Jonathan, the idea to have a, a semester, I mean, a January semester in um, the Galapagos. Mm. And so then there was the third sequence, which would be everything since you know, Darwin. So that's how that sequence evolved. But I think the main... The main innovation that we, we came up with was to offer a travel component uh, during the January interterm. And that's something that I've been doing in previous years on, on, on my own. I, I, I would run an art and architecture class uh, for um, students interested in... During the summer, they have other obligations. Um, Finding venues that are available for use during the summer is difficult because everybody wants to go in the summer. And because January is a time during around much of the world, it's cold. You know, we decided to start going to the tropics. And right in the middle, Honors 102, is the scientific revolution. And so um, when um, Jeff was the first, Jeff Burkhart and Jay Jones taught the first class, Pablo and I taught the second class. And uh, it's kind of passed around. Pablo's gone three times. I'm going to go again this January, so that'll be twice. Um, but what we wanted to do was introduce students to the origin of how did evolution, mm -hmm. the theory of natural selection, come to be. So um, we have the students read uh, a book called The Reluctant Mr. Darwin. <laughs> and we take them through not just the, the all theory, though they do learn that, but we also take them behind, like, what is it from a scientist's perspective? What does cutting edge look like? What are some of the issues that scientists face, especially in that time, dealing with his Christian heritage and his knowledge of science and how they, you know, didn't quite fit, and then how they did fit. Yeah, yeah. And so we take them through that, and then we walk them through the life sciences, including um, the theory of natural selection, and then we take them to the Galapagos and they get to see it. So uh, it's one of my favorite, well, I have a lot of favorite classes to teach, <laughs> but I do love it, because um, the students get to learn about it for two weeks in the classroom, six to eight hours a day, and then they go into the field and they just get immersed. Um, and it's not a vacation. We get them up early and take them on hikes and take them swimming and they get to see all this life 
um, themselves and get to see the finches and tortoises and, and look at different neck patterns and it, it's really, it's fun. Now their, their worlds have been forever transformed by this, this incredible um, experience. And then a number of years later, when, when Jeff and Jay were um, no longer able to, to continue the, uh, the trip, I think they had biology trips of their own yeah. that, that they wanted to take care of. Um, Kat and Pablo Weaver took over on, uh, on that trip, and um, I presume it continues to this day, does it? Still? It does, it does. Yes. Um, so we developed the program uh, along those lines, and it grew during the three years I was director of the program. When I was a student, a series called the Honors Colloquium, where students are encouraged to go to events around campus, around the Laverne community, really, uh, to take in the arts, to go to academic lectures, and so that really also uh, made me realize the full value of what this university has to offer. take back the Honors 499 class from Barbara Jefferson, I mean she gave it up, uh, and she had taught a, a version of it called Searching for the Self, I think, mm -hmm. where students were spending a lot of time, as I understand it, um, focusing on something that they had enough time to focus on mm -hmm. um, during their college careers. Um, and there was also a component looking at the history of Laverne, I think. Um, so I wanted it to be a little bit more contemporary, a little mm -hmm. bit more a little harder for the students, um, and uh, it sounded easy in, in talking to a lot of the students. So, so I made it a group project class where at the beginning of the semester we brainstorm. Usually, most semesters we brainstorm political issues, um, and just any issues, social issues. I mean, any type of like contemporary problems, um, locally or in the world, and they'll pick one. Uh, and they'll research it, they'll research its implications globally, nationally, locally, um, and then they'll identify a community organization that tries to address that issue, and they'll work with them, and then they'll do some sort of event or project that tries to either inform an audience in a, in a moving and impactful way about the issue, or tries to actually like support the community organization. Um, so it's, it's a little bit more, I don't know, reciprocal with the world or to mm. the world around them. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the title is The World is Our Neighborhood, so um, so I think the, the course kind of bears that out. Being an honor student at the University of Laverne comes with many additional perks that aren't available to other university students. Honor students have access to the Honor Center. The Honor Center provides free printing, computers, and a quiet place to study or to engage with other honor students. The Honor Center has had three homes on campus throughout its existence. I remember, you know, initially when I when I came to Laverne, uh, we didn't have a designated honors space, uh, and I remember that a lot of times we had courses or honors meetings in Miller 108, mm -hmm. which I still think of that room as, you know, I remember having meetings and classes in there, but now it's the writing director's office, part of it, and part of it's the language lab. It, oh. it hasn't been a classroom for years, but um, I still remember, you know, the honors committee meetings in those, in, in there, because I think this was next to Andrea Labinger's office in Miller Hall. Um, and then later we had the house. Um, it's a small private house. Right. Uh, west of here. Right, but you must have pushed for it and asked for it. I pushed for it. Hard and, for it. Yeah. I, I, we almost came to blows between um, <laughs> Loretta Romani's group and the honors program. We were there were three, three or four groups vying for that little property. And how did honors ultimately win? Oh wow! Well, I have to thank one of my wonderful honor students, Mario Guerrero. He, do you remember Mario? I do. Mario is personality plus. <laughs> And he also was quite adept at, at uh, technology, and so we, we put together this, it wasn't a PowerPoint, but it was something, it was like a PowerPoint presentation. Uh -huh. We took photographs of the house as it, in its current state, and then we kind of um, superimposed images of what we wanted it to be, look like, and how we would use it if we were given the opportunity. And 
we outlined what our needs were, and we were super prepared. Wow. And I let Mario do all the heavy lifting because he was much more adept at using the, uh, the PowerPoint than I was. Uh. And we got it. Wow. <laughs> I don't know if the university owns it anymore, if it's a private residence, but it's been reconverted into a bungalow yes. with a, you know, a bedroom and a kitchen. And, and in those days, it was uh, um, it did have a kitchen, but it was classroom space. Right. So it was over there, and it was a nice space, but it was a little bit off the beaten path. And it was, I think, a little bit difficult to manage because you always had to, is you had to lock it because it really wasn't on campus. And so if there wasn't somebody there, you had to lock the door behind you and always make sure that there was somebody there at all times who could open the door if a student wanted to use it. And it was a little bit inconvenient, I think, for the students to get out there. Um, they, they did. Then it moved into the basement of Miller Hall, and into the area that used to be the cafeteria, I guess. But then, since I, you know, was honors director, it's moved to the library, and, mm. and I, I'm sure that's a better space because it's it's open, you know, all the hours that the at the, uh, well, more or less, I suppose. I mean, when I came in, this became the new honor space. Before, it was uh, a couple of, I think it's fair to say, dank offices um, in the basement or garden level of Miller Hall. Oh, um, yeah. And, and those were dark and, and kind of gloomy. Um, and and since we had this space, I mean, we've got these lovely windows, we got the computer lab and the lounge. I mean, it was easy for me to, I mean, I think actually that was, it wasn't the expectation, but when Jonathan Reed sat down, sat me down with Chip and was like, what furniture do you want to order? Or what tables do you want to order? I mean, that was just part of my incoming job, was sort of appointing the area to some extent. So so I think that was just something that that I continue to do. I don't yeah. know, I do it with my classes. Like, how can I tweak it and make it better? I mean, you saw in May we were moving furniture around to, to make the space a little more comfortable out here. Um, I just think what I would like if I were a student. So, yeah. Um, I had higher hopes for the like social or co-curricular components when it started. I mean, I tried to have like Thursday night dinners and Thursday night movies, um, but it's hard to get students to leave the comfort of their dorms and their cable TV and their, you know, not having to do anything or move anywhere to have what they want. So so I, I stopped uh, struggling against that. And yeah, the students who, who have, want to use the space get to use it. And, yes. and it's easy for me to, you know, get microwave popcorn and, and coffee. Yeah. Additional perks of the Honors Program include early class registration, Freshman Honors Community Housing, and peer mentoring during a student's freshman year. Do you know, in, in a way, I think, uh, I don't know if you feel this way, but I, I, it was for the students, of course, that was always the primary goal. But a secondary effect was that um, it became exciting and fun for the faculty as well. I think so. It stretched us. Well, I know it did to me in, in ways that I could never have anticipated. I learned about other disciplines. I learned um, how they mesh together. And right. that was fun. I An so. opportunity to engage with other faculty members and get students interested and excited about a topic. And it gives us the freedom to explore something that wouldn't necessarily be part of our curriculum exactly. in a more traditional institution. Retain very, very fond memories of what the what the honors program can be because of that collaborative ethos of, of the early days when we when we first well when we first arrived at the University of Laverne, but when we first taught in the in the in the honors program. And that is something that I got really throughout the entirety of my time in the honors program at Laverne, the sort of cultural immersion. Mm. The honors program has given me so many great opportunities during my time at Laverne. I've met some of my best friends through the program, taken some amazing courses with inspiring professors, and gotten to spend two weeks in Ecuador and the Galapagos Islands, something I would never have gotten the chance to do without the ULV honors program. Jillian Hughes, class of 2018, business administration major.
The Honors Program has allowed me to explore educational topics outside of my major. I have enjoyed having the opportunity to think critically with students and classes that offer unique topics and curriculum, something I would not have had the opportunity to do if I was not in the Honors Program. Rachel France, Class of 2019, Mathematics major.